Hello, welcome to my studio, I'm Tim Packer. If you're an artist who sells your work, at some point you're gonna have to deal with the issue of shipping your work. I get an awful lot of questions about that and we end up shipping a lot of work across Canada, down the US, even across the ocean uh, to the UK and Europe. Uh, so in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how we package up our work and deal with the issue of shipping. So I have here a large 36 by 48 original that we have to ship from Canada down to the US. So the first thing we have to be concerned with is how can we package this and protect it? Now what I used to do is ship uh, paintings in wooden crates. That can eat up a lot of time in terms of preparing the crate, um, but it also makes it very heavy uh, and really increases the shipping costs. And we've come up with a solution using the rigid um, pink styrofoam insulation. Uh, and this we found to be a really lightweight, uh, but very good way of protecting the work. So what we do first is we wrap the painting in bubble wrap. Now we always wrap our paintings and G-clays with the bubble side facing, and we have never had any issues with that. Uh, but I have heard from people that have said when they've done that, it has created the bubble pattern um, on the painting. And so that I think comes from if the painting is not fully cured or fully dried. But we like to do that. That way there's less chance I think that it's gonna stick. And we just always know the same side of bubble always gets put against the painting. That way when we reuse it, um, we're not putting a dirty piece of bubble wrap that sat on the floor bubble side down against the painting or a giclet. So we wrap the painting in bubble wrap and then it's time to prepare our styrofoam insulation. Now this insulation um, where we live, it comes in uh, 24 inch wide and eight foot long strips. So we are gonna cut two strips into two foot by three foot sections and put one of those on the front and back and then we're going to cut another section of a two foot um, section and a one foot section of four feet long and cross that the opposite way on the front. So we're going to have two um, thicknesses of styrofoam insulation on the, the face of the painting and one thickness of styrofoam insulation on the back. Then we're going to use pallet wrap to secure the, the, in, the insulation to the front and back of the painting. And then we're just going to use some packing tape to make sure that it's really fixed um, on the ends and it's not going to move around. Now once we've got that done, then we have to get our box. So we actually end up buying our boxes from some of them from Uline, which is a huge international um, business supply company that has all kinds of different boxes. But we also have a local supplier here in Oshawa. Um, so wherever you are, I would just say Google. Um, cardboard box suppliers to find out what's in your area and because we do a lot of shipping we have a lot of different stock sizes of boxes so for this particular painting um, a 3 by 4 we've got a box that just accepts the 36 by 48 with the insulation and bubble wrap and it is actually a telescoping box so there's a bottom and a top once we've kind of put them together you squeeze in the bottom um, and then it, the top goes over top of it and you push it down until it's snug. And then we're gonna use packing tape to secure this really well. Um, and that's how we ship um, originals. Um, for G-clays, we typically go a little less kind of um, on the side of caution and we'll put two sheets of cardboard on the face and a sheet of cardboard on the back. And that's just because it's very easy for me to replace a G-clay if it gets damaged. Um, but for an original, like this piece is over $5,000, I'm gonna take a little extra to make sure that this doesn't get damaged. Now we've been shipping work for 15 years. We've never had any, any um, incidents with anything being damaged, knock on wood. Um, but I, I think probably the odds are that if you do this for your entire lifetime, you may in fact have something happen where it's going to be damaged. I have a friend of mine actually who, even though she had her work packed in wooden crates and these were wooden panels, a forklift truck, actually one of the forks went through the actual wooden crate and, and put, put a hole in two of the paintings. Um, 
So that's the only other thing that whenever you have artwork out there, even if you're just hanging them in galleries, there's always a chance of damage happening to them. Now, I just kind of look at that as the cost of doing business. If it ever happens, if it happens to an original, then I would either repaint the piece or refund the person their money. Now, you might be tempted to get insurance on your artwork when you're shipping. Um, don't do that. At least that's my advice. Because while all of the shippers will sell you insurance, if you read the fine print, one of the, um, one of the things that they say they will not cover is artwork. So they'll gladly take your 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars, whatever it is to get insurance. But if you ever have an issue and make a claim, you'll be disqualified because it says very clearly they do not um, cover artwork or works of art. Now what you may end up being able to do is if you have a, um, a business insurance rider, um, then you may be able to get coverage through them in terms of shipping artwork. But then it also becomes very important that you document all of your sales because even if it is covered, you're going to have to justify to their satisfaction the actual value of the artwork. And then likely you're only be gonna be given wholesale value of it. So I just don't really worry about the insurance side. I just do the best that I can to package things up um, and know that if something happens, then, um, then I'll deal with it then. So once you've got the piece packaged, then it comes into how do you ship it? Who do you ship it with? Um, so I live just outside of Toronto and we found a fabulous um, app through Costco called ShipTime. And what that allows us to do is anytime we go to ship something, we put in the dimensions, the height, the width and the length and the weight and ShipTime will tell us which shipper will give us the best cost. Uh, depending on where it has to go. And it's not always the same shipper. So that's why we love this. We just used to use one shipper, but we found sometimes, depending on the size or depending on where it was going, another shipper would be cheaper. So by just putting all the information into the ship time app, um, we, get, we get all of the quotes and we know who we'd like to go with. Um, so if you wanna do that, please don't, please don't ask me questions about how to do the ship time. Just go to, Costco site or Google it. Any of the specifics here, um, you can just Google it to find out. Um, and it goes, it's the same with the actual shipping documents. That's the other thing with ship time that actually prints out the shipping label for us. So we take that down here um, and then the shippers actually show up at our door and pick up the artwork um, and take it away from us. Now we also, prov we also provide a commercial invoice um, for our pieces going down to the States as well as a the documentation for the free trade agreement. But again, depending on where you are, um, if you want to find out what documentation is required, Google it. I don't want people to be kind of relying on me for what documents you need and don't need. Um, and so all I can tell you is that's what we do. Uh, but when you go to ship your own, Google it um, or talk to the people in customs um, and find out for yourself. Uh, like I say, I haven't had a problem yet with ours, but I'm not the ultimate authority on shipping. So don't take my word for it. Go on the internet and find out for yourself what documents are required, depending on where you're shipping from and where you're shipping to. So that is how we provide, um, how we package up our work for shipping. Um, and we end up shipping a lot of pieces, um, particularly since we have an e-commerce store and we end up with a lot of sales online. So if in this current kind of post internet age, um, you're interested in running your, your artwork as a business, then at some point you're very likely going to get involved in having an e-commerce store and you're gonna have to ship. So that's what we do. I hope you found this helpful. I'll be back to you next time. I'm Tim Packer and thank you for your time.